So as many of you are well aware by now, fanfiction exists everywhere. Wattpad, AO3, fanfiction.net, LiveJournal, Quotev, Tumblr, even YouTube. But today I want to talk about the realm of Twitter fanfiction and a fascinating ecosystem that popped up around it. An ecosystem that, like many others in the world, may be threatened by corporate corruption and greed. Wow, I can't believe I was actually able to tie that all together. This got dark. So like many of you out there, I have a Twitter account at the Rolly Coley. But since my later college years, so like 2018, 2019, one of the biggest reasons I've stuck with Twitter, even after a certain elongated muskrat took over, was to read fanfic. I'd follow writers from a whole bunch of different fandoms I was and am still in, wait with bated breath for them to update their fix, and really came to appreciate Twitter fanfiction as its own unique form of creative writing. What makes Twitter fanfic different from traditional fanfic? Why do people enjoy it? What are the pros and cons, the culture around it? Is it at risk of disappearing with each new Twitter stipulation? Without further ado, let's discuss. But before we begin, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Lilo, and their product, the Lily 3. Look, maybe you're new to the world of personal massagers and you want to start being able to have some quality me time or spice things up with your partner, but you aren't really sure where to start. Meet the Lily 3, the third iteration of its namesake wow. that has been improved with each generation, but has maintained its reliable, discreet, small, and ergonomic design, which makes it compact and low-key enough to take with you wherever you need to go. Not to mention its velvety finish. Personal massager ASMR, let's go. <laughs> Lily 3 offers eight different vibrations patterns, varying in intensity from a teasing murmur to a satisfying pulse, and is completely waterproof for unrestrained self-exploration, all right in the palm of your hand. To celebrate Lilo's 20th anniversary, the Lily 3 will be offered at a special price of $79 all throughout 2023. So if you're game and curious, check it out. Thank you so much, Lilo, for supporting my content and the incredible toys. Let's get back into it. What is Threadfic? Fanfics on Twitter are known as Threadfics due to being created and existing as threads. Posts that are built upon with subsequent replies forming a sequence that goes on and on and on until a thread ends. You're left with this string of posts, thread, all connected, that when looked at in all its entirety, makes a fic. It's like a literary accordion. Now, as you can imagine, writing a fic, or writing anything really, can be a challenge on Twitter due to the character limit. You have to encapsulate your thoughts, the story you want to tell, and make it punchy and nice to read, all within 280 characters. And then you have to do that again, and again, and again, and again, to build your thread fic. And you could definitely just write everything out all at once and then post it on Twitter bit by bit. A lot of Twitter writers do this and there's nothing wrong with it. It makes sense. But surprisingly, this isn't really considered the standard for creating thread fix. Thread fix are typically written bite by bite, piece by piece to come into being. So the writer has to think about what's gonna happen next. How do they wanna pace things? How do they maintain their style while making it concise? And then consolidate their vision for content into small packages they put out little by little, one at a time. It's really an art form. Writers adding to their thread fic throughout the day are able to gauge audience reaction, basically in real time, as their readers reply and quote retweet, which is like retweeting or reblogging or reposting with your own added commentary on your own page or profile. Think memes, gifs, and word salad conveying their thoughts on how they feel about the thread fic's progression. This results in a sort of serialization component that's not really found in fanfiction on other platforms. On Wattpad, you can comment on specific parts of a fic and then and others can piggyback off of that, for example. But it's not the same as, say, seeing an author update their thread a few times each hour and you having the ability to follow and commentate as it's coming out. Not just that, but readers can actually play an active role in deciding where the fic goes through interactive polls, services like Curious Cat and conversing with the author themselves in replies or even DMs. Should a character chase after their runaway lover after a really bad spat or wait it out and let them cool off but risk them not coming back? The choice is in your hands. And if it gets really intense and an author sees that people don't like where the story is going, then they still have room to pivot fairly easily or tell them to off and block them all if they're being really, really pushy. Threadfics inherently feel more casual, more laid back. You'll often see social media AU threadfics because it just suits the format so well. Why do people enjoy writing threadfics? For fic authors, it's nice for them to be able to stream of consciousness write something and share it with the world without the expectations of a well-polished, dated, structured fanfic posted in large chunks over a long period of time 
looming over them. Threat fics often serve as brainstorming spaces, an area to explore ideas freely with little risk. Even if you really don't feel like writing, writing a thread fix still feels like you're doing something and helping keep those creative juices flowing. You could tweet out something like, fic idea for an AU where character A meets character B at the Target Pharmacy and they both witness the pharmacist kill someone and now the trajectory of their lives has been changed forever. You could fully flesh it out or just leave it as a loose outline you'll flesh out at some point later on. Or leave it and forget about it. Most thread fics aren't too long, they usually read like a 2k to 20k word one shot, but I have seen thread fics hit the six, no, seven digit word counts and hundreds and hundreds of tweets cumulatively. Sometimes authors will actually throw out challenges like, hey, give me a prompt or an idea and I'll write a one tweet thread fic about it. There's really no pressure to expand upon a small Drabble thread if you don't want to, besides the people in your comments like, we want more, make this a full fic, write more for this thread, please, 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 if you're a bigger account. That's really a woe with like fanfiction authors anywhere though. Why do people enjoy reading thread fics versus the more traditional fanfic? I'm speaking very generally when I say this, but thread fics can be continuous, fairly consistent, quick to digest, and easy to read. You also have the chance to feel more connected to the writers if they post things besides their fix on their Twitter. You can see life updates, explanations as to why they can't update at the moment, author's notes giving you the inside scoop right below the fic blurble they're discussing, with everything accessible all in the same place. Imagine you're on your work break at lunch or at school waiting for your teacher or professor to arrive. You've got, say, 20 minutes, you open up Twitter, scroll through, see what your favorite fanfiction authors are up to, and what's this? They just started a new thread fic and the last update was five minutes ago. You read every tweet in the thread and you even manage to catch three or four more updates before class starts or you have to go back to work. And you know, by the time your next break or free period rolls around, the thread fic would have likely updated a few more times, so it's something to look forward to. And if it turns out that thread fic didn't get updated, maybe the author got busy with something, they have a life after all, then it's likely that other thread fix you're following did get updated. Now for the cons. Well, for one, as a reader, Twitter can be an absolute pain to navigate. Trying to find thread fix you may like is often a journey in of itself. They're often not tagged or they get buried or they can get broken and segments of fanfic are just floating around everywhere and you don't know which piece connects to which. And then going back and trying to find your favorite thread fix, either in your bookmarks or your likes, or maybe you retweeted it at some point, is also very tedious. And because a good portion of thread fix are loose outlines or drabbles, they can come off as choppy or shallow. Like you're not really reading a full-fledged fic, but rather a first draft or a rough retelling of something that's gonna be polished up and published later, posted in all its entirety. And this is perfectly fine with the many people who like that sort of lo-fi, laid-back fanfiction reading experience, but it may be frustrating for those other readers who want something more meaty and complete. It's why at the end of the day, Threadfic authors will still consolidate all of their tweets for a Threadfic into a work they break up into chapters and then post onto AO3. It can also be hard to go back and reread portions of a Threadfic, especially if it's a long one because of the format restrictions the way Twitter works with scrolling. It can be really inconvenient and obnoxious to have to scroll and scroll and scroll to see what happens next. And then heaven forbid Twitter refreshes or your phone dies and you can't find your thread fic anymore. Ooh. This has happened to me way more times than I'd like to admit. As a writer, there may be a different pressure present that differs from the usual looming dread of, oh no, I gotta finish writing and editing and uploading my fanfic to AO3 or Wattpad. With thread fix, because everything is happening all at once with the content being produced and reader reactions and you're seeing people comment or quote retweet or like your thread fic, it's all happening in real time. You can feel either exhilarated by the attention you're getting or incredibly and uncomfortably perceived. Because people are literally staring at your fanfic, you can see it all in the numbers and waiting for that next tweet to come and that next one, and that next one, just watching. It can feel like someone's breathing down your neck, waiting to see what you're gonna do next. Overall, I think thread fics are an incredible, unconventional, amazing way to enjoy fan fiction for both readers and writers alike, for the beginners and the seasoned professionals. But it does come with its own set of pitfalls, so weigh the pros and cons in your head and see if you wanna dip into that realm of fan fiction if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a really fun deep dive for me to do because again, I read a lot of thread fics.
fanfics. And I follow, and I'm even mutuals with so many wonderfully talented fanfiction authors that do threadfics on Twitter. I hope it was informative. Let me know if you decide to give threadfics a try, or if you love them yourself. And if you don't like them, then share your woes. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! <laughs> Bye.